Welcome and thank you for standing by. Today's call is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. All participants are in a listen-only mode until the question and answer session of today's conference. At that time, you may press star 1 on your phone to ask a question. I would now like to turn the call over to your host, Deb Rivera. You may begin. Great. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Deb Rivera, and I work in the communications team for data.census.gov, and I will be the host for today's event. I'd like to start by saying welcome and thank you for joining us. Um, by now, most of you know of or have seen some of the new features and enhancements released on our data search platform, data.census.gov. And in today's webinar, we will be taking a closer look at the improved navigation on data.census.gov, where our presenter will go through a live demonstration of the new navigation, filtering, and mapping features on the site. I am joined today by some of my awesome colleagues who are panelists in the WebEx event, and they will be helping to answer your questions submitted via the chat. They will also be helping me in sending out any helpful links that we can provide for you, so keep an eye out on the chat for those links. If you want to send a question by chat, please select the All Panelists option from the drop-down menu so all of our panelists can see your question. And also, please make sure that you do not include personal information along with your question. We will also be providing you with our contact information in case you have additional questions and wanted to reach out to us directly after we conclude today's webinar. And this is very important. Today, we are looking for questions from the phone line. So towards the end of the presentation, we will open up the phone lines for a live Q&A session from our audience. Um, to ask the question at that time, you do need to be dialed in using your telephone and the conference number that you see on the screen right now. The questions that we receive in the chat will be answered by our panelists. Lastly, the slide deck and the recording of today's webinar will be posted on the Census Academy site. And again, we will be sending that link through the chat, so keep an eye out for it. Once again, thank you so much for joining us today. And now it's my pleasure to hand things off to our presenter, Tyson Weister. Great. Thank you, Deb. And thank you all so much for tuning in to the webinar this afternoon. We are very excited to show you today the improved navigation on data.census.gov. And of course, my name is Tyson Weister, and I work on the communications team for data.census.gov with my colleague, Deb. What we have planned in order to show you this navigation is to break it up into three different examples uh, to show you these latest updates, and then also demonstrate them for you on the live site so you can see how easy and intuitive this update is. We'll show a little bit in the slide deck format to start and then, of course, follow that up with a demonstration before opening up for questions. But before we get there, we just wanted to take a moment to thank you all so much for providing us feedback over the past year. Uh, we've been analyzing this feedback and feeding it over to the development team in order to make the site work better for you. And with this set of updates, we've really focused on comments that can help make the site more intuitive, convenient, and uh, using fewer clicks for you to get to where you want and need, uh, comments to help you get to the search criteria you need, and also make it easier to see the search criteria that you've already selected, um, just to help put in context how that impacts the results that you're getting, and just making that connection more clear. So specifically, on December 2nd, last Thursday, we released these improvements to data.census.gov to make the site more intuitive. They fall into these four categories, uh, making the navigation improvements, result page upgrades, filtering enhancements, and mapping refinements. So we're going to take a look at each of these, and we're going to start with the navigation and filtering page upgrades. My favorite out of all of the updates that were pushed out is the addition of a dedicated filter panel. This will appear on the left-hand side across all of the pages on data.census.gov. And what it allows you to do is to access, view, edit, 
your search criteria as you're going along through the site, and you no longer have to navigate to a separate pop-up window or navigate to a separate page on the advanced search and then come back to your list of results. It is there ready for you to use it at any time. Um, so we're going to take a, a deeper look at that when we run some of our searches. With that, do keep in mind if you don't need the filter panel or your other panel for the results, they are now expandable and collapsible, so you have the flexibility to open and close them when you want and need them. If you want to see more of the table or map view, um, you would want to close the panels. And when you want to use the filters or browse through the list of results and click between them, you would want to open up those panels. Another helpful update with this release, thanks to your feedback, is we have exposed all of the toolbar options on the top of the table. So you're able to view the notes, edit the filters, hide columns, transpose rows and columns, or export, print, and download the table um, in the initial view as well as in the full table view when the table is across your screen. Uh, previously, these buttons were not accessible through the initial table view. So having this update is fewer clicks for you to get to the functionality you want and need. And also, you don't have to know to make all of these clicks um, in order to access the table controls you need. And one of the great things about Census Bureau data and what sets us apart from other surveys and programs is the vast amount of information that we provide from our surveys. What this means is that sometimes you get a long list of table results for a particular topic. And we heard a lot of feedback from users that want to browse through this long list in a way that's a little bit more efficient and scannable. So with that, we took the feedback and provided new options for you to increase the number of tables you see in your results list at any time to 25 or 50 tables in your list. And we've also added pagination. So when you get to the bottom of that list, you will see pages for you to scroll through the different options. So in this example, there are 77 table results. I increased the amount shown in my list to 50. So it shows me the first 50 on page 1 and the remaining 27 if I click on page 2. So let's take a look now that we've highlighted some of those updates for you. Let's take a look on the live site to see them in action. Again, focusing on the navigation and results list improvements using health insurance and taxes in 2015 as an example. So navigating to the live site, here I have Google Chrome, and we'll type in data.census.gov to take us to the landing page. For this example, I'm going to use the single search bar and type health insurance Texas and then press enter. So again, no changes in terms of single search functionality or the landing page at this time. But once you go ahead and run that search, you'll start to see some of the updates that we mentioned. So in this page here, uh, one thing that I do want to point out is at the top, we have broken out the number of results by type. So you can see there are 87 tables, 87 maps, and over 1,000 web pages that match our search criteria for health insurance in Texas. And then on the left-hand side is where we see that filter panel um, that's dedicated for you and just really helps clarify the search criteria that you've entered and how the system is reading it. So from the text we entered, we can see it's found a match for health insurance and Texas, and again, it's providing us the filter options on the left-hand side in case we want to add additional criteria in order to narrow that down further. I want to go ahead and look at the table. So I'm going to click the tables option here at the top. And here we see we continue to get the filter panel. And then we also get the panel with our list of 87 table results. As I mentioned on the slide, these panels are expandable and collapsible. So when you want to use them, of course, access them. Um, and when you want to collapse them, you can click the buttons on the left or the arrows at the top. I'm going to collapse both of those here. Just to show you, this allows you to see the table across your full screen. And notice that these 
button at the top of the table have been in our view the entire time, allowing us to access the functionality that we want and need without having to look for a certain button or navigate deeper within the site. Right, so I'm going to click the buttons for filters and results to expand those panels back up. Again, you can always click the button to expand and collapse them or the chevron. And from here, I want to show how you can use the filters in order to add additional search criteria. So I'm going to use this opportunity to specify the year that I'm interested in for 2015. On the left, you can see there is a category that says years. Once we click years, we'll see different checkboxes. So I'm going to choose the checkbox for 2015. Again, we are looking for checkbox as a final selection. Once you mark the checkbox, we can see it's added the filter to the left-hand side with our other search criteria. Once you're done using this year's filter panel, you can click the X at the top, and that's going to remove that particular panel from your view and take you back to the set of filters, results, and your table. I want to show here, again, how you can increase the number of tables in view at a time. Right now, the default is to see 10 tables. On the previous version of the site, this was your only option. 10 tables, scroll to the bottom and find the Load More button. Um, and you'd have to go through that process seven times to load this full set of table results. With this update, you can click 50 to get up to 50 tables in your list. And then you can page through the different results in order to see all of the different table IDs and table titles that are available to you. And if you'd like to dedicate more space on your screen to this, you can expand um, this column. I'm going to go back to the very first result. wanted to show you all that functionality quickly. One other update is making more transparency with the search criteria that you've entered, how they're being fed and recognized by the system in the different categories that are available. So in the upper left where it says three filters, there's a question mark. Once we click that question mark, it's going to tell us the different types of search criteria categories for the filters. So we can see there are filter categories for geographies, codes, surveys, topics, years, and tables. And they are color-coded with icons. So as an example, our first filter category was for health insurance. Um, it shows a little icon of a open book, and it's a shade of blue. That tells us on the right-hand side that it's considering health insurance as a topic category. The other piece of information with the filters that's really important is whether you see a lock icon or an X to the right of each filter. This tells you the way that the search criteria were recognized by the system, and the different ways that you can go about editing the search. So when you see a lock icon next to your search criteria, here we're seeing that for health insurance and for taxes, this tells you that these search criteria are based on the text that you type into the single search bar. If you want to make changes to those parts of your search, you would want to edit the text in your single search bar and run that search again. When you see an X next to the criteria, as we see in this example for 2015, that means that the filter was generated based on a checkbox you selected. Remember, we checked the box for years 2015. And if you want to delete that filter individually, you can simply click the X to the right of that filter. So if we no longer want to narrow our results just to 2015, we can go ahead and click that X. It will remove the checkbox and give us data for all available years. Here we can see it's defaulted us back to the most recent available year for 2019. And then one last thing I wanted to show while we're still on this page for the navigation is a new option for viewing all products. So we currently have continued the functionality with a product drop-down menu at the top of each table. When you click that drop-down menu, um, depending on the type of table that you're in, you'll be able to uh, go back to previous vintages and years of the table, as well as switch between the ACS one-year and five-year estimates. We've made that process a little bit better here by also including that functionality on the left-hand side under View All 19 Products, or 18 Products. 
when I click that button, we'll see all of the available options here laid out. And rather than clicking in the product drop-down menu, you just have an additional option to easily make changes to the year that you'd like to get the data for. So here I've clicked on 2015 ACS one-year estimate subject tables um, just to show you kind of the different ways that you can go about changing the year for your table, depending if you added a filter or wanted to take advantage of one of these other navigation pathways to get to the data you want and need. And then just to take a quick peek at the table, um, the first result shows selected characteristics of health insurance coverage in the United States. We can see as an example from this table to put it all together that we're getting results for Texas based on the 2015 ACS one year. The first row of the table shows the civilian non-institutionalized population. And as we scroll across, we can see the total population with health insurance in Texas in 2015 was 82.9%. And as you scroll further right, the population without health insurance, you get the total number as well as the 17.1%. Moving on to our next examples that are going to showcase all of the great filtering updates that we put together. One of the most common pieces of feedback from data users is that they needed help getting to the correct types of geographies um, that were compatible with the data that they want and need. With this update, we have addressed this feedback by pulling out the nine most commonly used geographies that people ask for us here at the Census Bureau and putting those at the top of the geography panel. So once you click on the geography filter, you can see these boxes are featured right at, at the top. And this is really helpful because, as we mentioned earlier, the benefit of census data is it provides so much detail. We go down to very granular geographies, and there's different ways you can slice and dice geographies. That means there are sometimes similar labels, so it is you know, possible that to, to get tripped up and, and click into a geography that was maybe a little more detailed than what you wanted and need. So this is going to help you get to those most common geographies that are compatible with the most available data from the site. And then if you want those more detailed geographies, there is an alphabetized list of all other geographies included below, as well as continued functionality at the top to click summary levels if you're an advanced user that knows the three-digit summary level code for the geographies that you've been using. Another feature of the filtering update is simplified views. So rather than showing all of the details on your screen at one time and expanding them horizontally as you make each click through the filter panel, we have simplified this to only show you just one section of the filter panel at a time. In this example, we're looking at a screenshot of all counties in Massachusetts, and we can see how we got to this selection by looking at the breadcrumbs and seeing that we're clicked into geography on the left. Then we chose the county level, as you can see at the breadcrumb at the top, and then choosing the state of Massachusetts, which brought us to this list of all counties in Massachusetts. So this just helps you focus on the action that you currently need to take while still providing you the context of how you got here, and also mirroring this type of view in our mobile environment as well. So you get a similar experience regardless if you're accessing our site on a desktop, your phone, a tablet, et cetera. Another way that we simplified filtering is to only show you the options that are compatible with what you've already selected. So in this screenshot, we're seeing an example where we've clicked on 2020 and then chose the decennial census redistricting data tables. And then once we clicked on the topics filter, it shows us just the list of topics that are compatible with what you've already selected. So this just makes it easier by not showing you all of the possible options, graying them out, and forcing you to scroll through things that aren't compatible with what you've already selected. We just give you a nice, clean list that makes sense with your current search criteria. As you work through the filter panel, please keep in mind a checkbox is always a final selection. And then we use folders to indicate 
categories that will give you more detailed options to choose from. So folders are not final selections. When you click them, you will drill deeper into the filter panel in order to get to a checkbox that you want and need. As you're working your way through the filter panel, there are several options for you to navigate backwards in case you clicked on something you didn't mean to or you want to make multiple selections. You can use the primary categories on the left-hand side as well as the options at the top, so the back arrow as well as the clickable words and phrases in the breadcrumbs. Those will all be options for you to navigate backwards, and we're going to work with those here in just a moment. And finally, one last quick update that we did for the filter panel to make it much easier to get to the geographies you want and need is providing simplified lists for geographies with variants. This includes geographies such as metropolitan, micropolitan areas, urban areas, congressional districts, and state legislative districts. In the past, you would have seen repeating labels for each different geographic vintage. So as an example, if I had pulled this up on the previous version of the site, I would have seen six different labels for the Boston metro area, some with identical labels, um, some with a label that says Boston, Cambridge, Quincy. And I would have had to know which version of the label was compatible with the data year that I wanted and needed. We have streamlined this process with this update, so you'll only see one label. And once you click that label, it will work historically for all um, possible census data for that geographic area. So let's take a look at this on the live site here. With this example, we're going to showcase how easy it is to filter by pulling up the 2020 census counts for three geographies, the whole county, Stratford County, and the Boston metro area. So navigating back to the live site, I'm going to click on the U.S. Census logo in the upper left. That's going to take us fresh to the landing page. And anytime you want to dive directly into the filters, click the link for advanced search on the landing page. And then you'll see the filter panel on the left-hand side. It looks just like it did when we ran the single search. Um, we've just gotten directly here. And we continue to recommend to start with whatever is most important to you. Here I'm going to start with the geography. Once I click geography, I see these nine boxes at the top with the most commonly used geography, just to help me get to what I most likely will want and need. We wanted to select Suffolk County, Massachusetts. So I'm going to click on the box that says County. Then I get a list of states. I'm going to choose Massachusetts. It's a folder that tells me it's not a final selection. And then once I drilled into that folder, I'm getting a list of all of the counties within Massachusetts. I see the checkbox for Suffolk County, Massachusetts. So I'm going to click the checkbox and see on the left-hand side that has added the search criteria to my selected filters in the upper left. And again, just wanting to remind you, notice how we went through this panel. It only showed us one section at a time. And the breadcrumbs at the top show us the clicks we made for county and for Massachusetts. Oftentimes, you'll want to select more than one geography. So I want to show you those ways to navigate backwards. I can click the link for geography on the left takes me back to the primary geographic panel area. And then, again, other ways that you can navigate backwards is to click on these breadcrumbs. These are clickable links when you see them linked in blue. My favorite way to navigate backwards is to use the arrow. And that just takes you back one click at a time, just so I don't lose my place. Um, it's the most efficient and uh, accurate way for me to navigate backwards through this panel. So we also wanted one additional county for New Hampshire. So I'm going to click the folder for New Hampshire, and then choose Stratford County, New Hampshire checkbox. We see a checked box, and it's added to the left with my filters. And now this time I want a totally different geography, not the county level. So I am going to click geography on the left, take me back to the beginning. 
and then I'll choose Metropolitan Statistical Area. I'm going to start loading up here with all of the metropolitan and micropolitan statistical areas in the U.S. And I'm looking for Boston, Cambridge, Newton. Check the box, and it's added to the left as a selected filter. And again, I'm just seeing that one label for Boston. It was really easy to scroll and get to this label, and it will give me data for all possible census years um, of that geographic area. And then if you want, you can add additional search criteria. We wanted these data from the 2020 census, so I'm going to add a few of those filters now. Clicking on Years, on the left-hand side, I'll choose 2020. And then I'm going to click Surveys on the left. But before I do that, just wanting to draw everyone's attention to what you're going to see on screen um, and really want to hit home how it's only showing you the options that are compatible with what you've selected. So we only have decennial census data for the 2020 on data.census.gov. We don't have any other surveys and programs currently for 2020 on our site. So when I click on surveys, you're going to see it flash with all possible surveys very quickly, and then it narrows that result just to the decennial census. So it just gives you that nice clean list with only the options that are compatible with what you've selected. So here I'm going to click on Decennial Census, and then you just get the one product that's currently available. You don't have to scroll through a long list of incompatible grayed out options. Same thing here. Um, I'm going to choose to select the topic for total population. So when I click Topics on the left, we're going to see all the topics appear very briefly and then it narrow it down just to those that are compatible with the 2020 decennial census redistricting data. And I want a total population. So what I'm going to do is click under Populations and People, click on the folder. And here I'm going to see Counts, Estimates, and Projections. And then I see a checkbox that says Population Total. Once you're ready to run your search, You'll continue to look in the lower right for the button that says Search. And then I'll go ahead and click Tables on the top. Before I do that here, um, I showed earlier how you can expand and collapse the result uh, filter panel column um, if you wanted more space to view this across your full screen. But I also just want to point out here, there is a View All, all Tables button on the All Results page. Um, which is another way if you want to dedicate your entire screen just to looking at the table IDs and table titles. If you had a long list you wanted to scroll through, this is new functionality that our data users have asked for. In this case, I want to look at the table, so I'm going to go ahead, click on Table, and then I can see, based on my filters, the first result is Table P1 Race, and I'm going to go ahead and view this across my full screen. And I can see total population from the 2020 decennial census is in the very first row. And I just see this here across all three geographies. All right, so now that you have seen all the great improvements to filtering, just want to show a couple of quick mapping updates before we tr start transitioning over to Q&A. One of the primary updates for mapping that you'll notice is a streamlined experience to customize the map. So what this means is that we've taken the existing mapping functionality and put it into one consistent experience. So you won't see drop-down menus at the top of the map and then some of your other customization options hidden away in a customized map a panel that you had to click to. It's all accessible here from the buttons at the top. So with this release, what you'll see are new buttons for dimensions, geos, vintage, product, color, and classes. I'm going to show each of these buttons on the live site for you. One new functionality that you'll see with the maps from the release is the transparency option. So once you click the colors button at the top, there is a new option that says transparency where you can slide anywhere between 0 and 100% in order to adjust the colors on your map. 
and the extent that you see the mapping features underneath the light street, and we'll visualize this here in just a moment. For this example, I'm going to show a basic map showing median income for all states. On the live site, we'll click the U.S. Census logo in the upper left, and then I'll click on the advanced search. We'll select a couple of search criteria. Here on the left, I'm going to choose my geography to start. Click on state and then choose the option for all states in the U.S. Once I check the box, we'll see it's on the left as a selected filter, and now I'll choose the income topic. So clicking the word topic, notice this time I'm really getting a full list of topics, not that a narrowed list just for the 2020 census like I did last time. Um, so just wanting to hit home here, if you're ever working through these panels and maybe not seeing an option that you expect, expect you might see, be very mindful of what is in your selected filters in the upper left. Um, here I'm going to go ahead and click Income and Poverty. I'm going to choose Income and Earnings, and then choose the Income, Households, Families, Individuals checkbox. None of those categories that we clicked through have changed with the release. The only difference is that we're just seeing one section of this panel at a time, and we're seeing um, folders in order to get to more detailed options with these icons. Um, in the past, those were just words and phrases without checkboxes. They're now represented as folders. Once we're ready to run the search, we'll go ahead and click Search in the lower right. And then I'm going to click Tables at the top. So you may be wondering, we're creating a map. Why are we looking at tables? All of our maps are table-based. That means that you have the option to map out any estimate you see in our data tables. It is helpful to familiarize yourself with the table layout before you create the map, and also make sure that you're clicked into a table that contains the data you want to map out. So we're going to take a moment to do that here right now. Looking at the first table result for S1901, income in the past 12 months, from the 2019 American Community Survey, I can see it's giving me some income breakout. And as I scroll through, I can see that this table does contain a row that says median income dollars. And then the first column of this table is showing me that it's giving data for Alabama, and it's at the household level. So in Alabama, the median household income was 51734 Once I scroll, I'll see this same estimate is provided for my other geographies. So here I've narrowed down what I want to map out. Once you're ready to create the map, you'll click on Map at the top. From here, you'll want to make sure that you're still clicked into the table that contains the data you want to map out. Here we can see S1901 is shaded. So at this point, I'm going to take advantage of this collapsible functionality. Click the arrow and move that filter panel out of view so I can really dedicate my full screen to the map. So everything that I've shown so far in terms of kind of the initial steps to create a map, nothing's changed with the release in getting to this point. What is new is, again, the functionality to customize the map is all accessible through these buttons. The last thing that we want to do in most cases is specify the data variable that we want to map out. So right now, the system is creating a map just based on the very first estimate in this data table. In this case, it's for the total number of households across each state in the U.S. You'll likely want to change that so you can click the Dimensions button, then click into the drop-down menu. And you'll see all of the options from that data table. There are certainly quite a few of them. There is a pattern to the way that they're organized, but you can also use this search functionality and type in a key label, such as median. And here I can see households, median income, dollars estimate. So this is median household income. I'm going to click that first option, and it's updated our map. 
So here we're looking at median household income across all states, states with darker shades of blue having higher median income. And I can click on a state if I want to see the specific value for median income. For example, in California, it was over 80,000. I want to walk through a couple of these other buttons as well, specifically the ones that are new. One new button is geos. This button allows you to change the boundaries that are shown on your map. So it doesn't let you clear or add new geography selections. Um, it only controls the boundaries that you're seeing on your map. So as an example, I'm going to change it to the county level. And it shows boundaries for all of the counties in the U.S. We haven't selected any counties at this point, so we're not going to see anything colored in. Um, our maps will only show one layer of geography at a time. If you want to edit your geography selection, do keep in mind the filters option on the left-hand side gives you access to click the X next to any geography if you want to clear or use the geography to add a geography selection. So I'll do that here very quickly just for clarity purposes and choose county. And I'll choose Alabama. And then I'm just going to select the option for all counties in Alabama, just so you can see how the filters interact with the layer that we're showing on the map. All right, so I selected those counties in Alabama. And we can see some of them are colored in if they were eligible for the ACS one-year estimate. I'm going to go ahead and switch back here to the state level. Other options on the map are to change the year or vintage. So when you click the Vintage button, if we wanted to, for instance, look at the 2018 American Community Survey, we can simply click the option and change the year. There's also an option for the product if you want to switch between the ACS one-year and the ACS five-year estimate. Also an option here for base map. This is an option that has existed in the past. What the base map shows you are the features that you see by, the, uh, by default on the map at all times. So the default is to show you some street lines and labels. As you zoom in farther, you'll see more of them. You can choose to see detailed options as well. This will show you the street lines and labels as well as parks and hospitals, military installations, and a few others. Or there's also a new option for no features to show if you just want to look at the thematic map. I'm going to switch back to the default option here for basic and then show you the new slider for the colors. So when I click the colors button at the top, the transparency is set by default to 70%. I want to show you how you can adjust the transparency when you have it at a lower setting. You're going to be able to see the base map options in more detail. And as you increase the setting all the way up to 100%, those base map options will no longer be in view. They will be colored, covered up by the colors of your thematic map. When you're zoomed out, when you adjust the transparency, again, lower setting, it's going to be more difficult for you to see the differences in colors. In higher transparencies, you're going to have nice, dark, bold colors that are easy to differentiate. All right, going back here to wrap up before we open up for questions, I want to thank everyone once again for all of the feedback that we've received over the past year and let you know that we continue to listen to your feedback and answer your data user questions. So when you look in the upper right, there's a link on our site that says feedback. It will give you an email address. We have staff on our team that are monitoring this email box all the time. So please take advantage of this opportunity to tell us how we can continue to make the site work better for you, as well as get your data questions answered. Another great way to stay in touch is to sign up for our email updates. When you visit the link here on the left-hand side, it will take you to the option where you can subscribe to data.census.gov updates. 
we send out a monthly newsletter letting you know of the latest system upgrades, data releases, and educational materials to help you make the most of data.census.gov. With that in mind, one of the upcoming educational resources that are available are data.census.gov workshops. We are hosting these in January on the basics of finding data on data.census.gov. So these are three opportunities for you to learn more about how to use the site um, as you can see, these are three-hour time slots, so these are going to be, you know, detailed deep dives into the site with opportunity for hands-on exercises and, of course, time for your questions for you to really get a chance to practice using the site yourself. Registration is limited to the first 25 people per session, just to make sure that these are able to be a session where you can get all of your questions answered. And of course, if demand allows, we would look to expand and offer more of these opportunities in the future. So definitely recommend if you're looking for an opportunity to get that hands-on practice to sign up for one of these workshops. I can't think of a better New Year's resolution than learning more about data.census.gov. And at this time, I'll go ahead and, and transition over to Deb. That's great. Thank you, Tyson. So I would like to invite you all to take a moment to share your thoughts about today's webinar through an evaluation survey. Um, you already know that your feedback is absolutely invaluable to us. It helps us design future training sessions. It lets us know how we can improve our webinars. And oftentimes, it also lets us know how we can improve our site. The link to the evaluation is in the chat box right now. And just as a reminder, it will also appear as a pop-up window once you exit the WebEx event. If you have any questions remaining after our session concludes, please feel free to reach out to one of the two email inboxes that are listed here. If you are a member of the public and have questions related to data.census.gov, please reach out to the Center for Enterprise Dissemination at census.data.census.gov. And for members of the public, you may contact the Public Information Office at PIO at census.gov. And now I would like to turn it over to the operator who will provide instructions on how to queue up for questions. Thank you. We will now begin our question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question over the phone line, please press star 1 from your phone, unmute your line, and speak your name clearly when prompted. Your name is required to introduce your question. If you would like to withdraw your question, press star 2. Again, to ask a question over the phone lines, please press star then 1. One moment for the first question. Our first question, your line is open. Hi. Um, when we were filtering geographies prior to this update, we could do a text search. So, for example, if we wanted Wyoming within the state selection, we could just start typing Wyoming and then um, it would jump to jump to match that text search. And I didn't see that function um, in the demonstration today, and I'm wondering if it's still available. Yeah, I'm so glad you asked that question. Um, I'm going to go to the live site here just to show a couple of things. The, the functionality you're describing is what we call here at the Census Bureau to search within a geography panel, and that was the functionality that allowed you to search within a particular list um, as you're working through each section of the filter panel, um, that is functionality that is it's a known issue that it isn't in this new update. So it's something that we're working to add back into the site in future releases. But I just wanted to point out a couple of other options for you that may work in some instances. One of those options is to find the filter. So this is a separate search from the single search bar. So, of course, you can continue to use the single search. If you're looking for a particular zip code area, as an example, you can type in a zip code here. And these are looking for filters. So it's looking for check boxes that match a specific selection. So you can see here it's found the detailed options. This first option is the primary zip code tabulation area that would give you demographic data from the ACS and decennial census. The second option here is a more detailed type of geography from 
this summary level that just looks at zip code by state. And then the final option is actually the zip code, which would give you business and economic data. So definitely recommend using this uh, find a filter functionality in the meantime as we're working to add more of, of those search within geographic panel functionality back in. The other thing I just want to point out is um, even though that functionality isn't carried over, do keep in mind that we improved the filter or the, the geographic list for many of these areas. So if you're clicked into metro area, you're not seeing six labels for each different type of geography. So while you do still need to scroll at this point in time to get to the one you want and need, um, it's much easier to do that because we deleted all those repeated labels. Um, but thank you for your question and your feedback and definitely something we're, we're working in a future release. And as a reminder, if you would like to ask a question over the phone lines, please press star 1 from your phone. One moment as we wait for any additional questions. And as we're waiting for more questions to come in, just want to remind you of additional ways that you can learn more about data.census.gov. One of those is through our resources page. When you visit the link in the upper left or click the Help button there on the landing page of data.census.gov, it will take you to our educational resources specifically on how to make the most of the site. This includes full-length recorded webinars, short videos, PDF with step-by-step -step instructions and screenshots, as well as a list of FAQs and a few other resources. We have made sure to update our FAQs and our PDFs and also release a new video showcasing the improved navigation on data.census.gov. So do know that that help button continues to be a current and up-to-date resource to help you make the most of the new site even with the improved navigation. As we're waiting for more questions to come in, just want to let you know about one additional resource for you is census.gov slash academy. This is the centralized educational hub for the Census Bureau that allows you to access resources not just related to data.census.gov, but for any tool at the Census Bureau in any topic or survey, so definitely invite you to check that out. You can also reach out to your local dissemination specialist. So we have data specialists located throughout the country that are experts in local data and helping you learn how to access local data if you would like to request a training for your area. The contact information census.askdata at census.gov or 1844askdata are here on this slide. They do free training, so this is a resource that is freely available to you. All right, Tyson, this is Deb. So I don't know if we have any other questions in queue, but um, we did uh, see a few questions that came in through the chat that we thought that maybe it would be beneficial um, to all of the participants to perhaps hear the answer. So if that's okay with you, I'd just like to read you just a couple of questions that came in. Great. Great. This first question is, is there an ETA on when the 2020 decennial data will be included in the searches? Great, so thanks for that question. Off the top of my head, I don't have an update on when the 2020, the next 2020 census data will be released. Currently, um, what we showed how to access in the second example were the set of six tables from the 2020 census redistricting data tables providing population and housing unit totals, as well as some information on race and ethnicity. Those data have been available on our site since the middle of September. Um, I would encourage you to check out the 2020 census web pages in order for updated information on when the next 2020 census results uh, would be released. I'm not sure if specific dates have yet been decided for that, um, but certainly would direct you to the web page for the 2020 census, and perhaps one of my colleagues would be able to share that in the chat if they haven't already. 
Yeah, if it's not on there already, um, I'll go ahead and send that out. Thank you, Tyson. The next question that we received was, can you customize large tables that go directly to download? Great. So there are a few different options to customize things on the site. I'm going to pull up here very quickly just the table view so we can take a look at some of those options and see what's available to you. We have not made any updates with this release in terms of the customization options that are available for any table and whether those customizations carry over when you export or download a table. So I'm just going to review what that functionality is very quickly in case folks weren't familiar with what already existed on the site um, and just to clarify. One of the options that are available, for instance, are to hide particular columns of a table. Um, so if I just wanted to look at the percents from this table, I could delete the estimate and margin of error column as an example. So there are options on the site to hide columns. You can also filter in some of our economic tables to only show you the data rows of a table that meets certain criteria. That functionality continues to exist with this new navigation update. Um, what that does is allows you to view a customized look of a table on the website. You can also export this table to Excel. Anytime you export and choose Export to Excel, it is going to reflect the customizations you see on screen. So in case you're not familiar with the export, once you click over to the Data tab, you'll see something that looks very similar to what you saw on screen, and you'll notice that the percent and percent margin of error are the only columns shown in the exported table. It doesn't show the columns we hid on the table display. If you download the table, you will still continue to get all of the available data from the table. The download is going to give you machine-readable output. So if you wanted to sort, map, or manipulate the data off the site using your own software, um, download would be the functionality that you would want. And we would continue to take feedback if you wanted um, customizations you make on screen to carry over into the download functionality. It's not something that was addressed with this release, um, but is something that we continue to consider and take feedback on. Thank you very much. And one last question before we check in with the operator. Can you give us a bit of a reminder on what is the most accurate survey, if it's the ACS one-year or if it's the ACS five-year estimate? Great question. So the ACS one-year is based off of a one-year period of data collection from a sample that happens on a monthly basis from January through December. And then, of course, the five-year is based off of five years of data collection from January of the first year to December of the last year in the period. In terms of what's going to be the most accurate, there's a couple of considerations you'll want to keep in mind. One-year estimates, first, are only available for certain levels of geography and only when those geographies have 65,000 people or more. So as an example, I don't know if you remember when we created the map of all counties in Alabama, it was showing the one-year estimates. Um, and we just saw a few of those on our map. That was because those were the counties that had populations of 65,000 and more. So you'll want to use the five-year estimates when that's the only option available for the geography you want and need. And then the other thing that you'll want to keep in mind is the margin of error. So anytime you have a table pulled up, you'll see the margin of error. I'm going to restore this table to its previous format. And that just shows you um, kind of the level of confidence that we're, these estimates are based on. So when you add and subtract the margin of error from the estimate, that tells you that we're 90% sure that the true value falls within that range when you add and subtract the margin of error from the estimate um, and wasn't the, because the, 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 the estimate is based on a sample rather than 100% count. So in terms of what's more accurate, you'll want to pay attention to margin of error. You'll want to pay attention to what's available for the geography you want and need. 
And then how important is it for you to have data collected over a one-year period of time versus a five-year period of time? If you're trying to look at changes or trends or what's the most recent look at something, um, the one-year estimate may be better for you, especially if you look at the margin of error and it's not what you would consider unreasonable in comparison to the estimate or if, you know, you're working with the larger geographies such as the state level or New York City, things of that nature. And if you have additional questions on that, our subject matter experts in the American Community Survey could certainly shed some light on, on this for you as well. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Tyson. Okay. Um, now we'll check in with the operator. Did we get any other additional questions in the phone line? We have no additional questions in the queue at this time. Thank you so much. Okay, Tyson, I will turn it over to you for the wrap-up. Well, I just wanted to thank everyone again so much for tuning into the webinar. Remind you that we are here to continue to take your feedback and answer your data questions. Again, at census.data at census.gov. We hope to see you in a future webinar. And thank you so much for all of you that have provided feedback to us in the past. This is the primary way that we continue to make the site work better for you, and we wouldn't be able to do it without you.